Uh, yeah, let's minimize this. So as you go through the uh, original page, it's a little bit unusual, okay? Yeah. Uh, there's historical reason why it happened that way, but uh, let's not worry about it. For now, what I would like to do is, if you want to create a project, so always you have to create a project, so let's create a new project. So we're going to call that biochip1. Uh, click on OK. Uh, okay, so once you have that, uh, before we open, can we offer that icon? What, what, what does this icon say? Is that important? Uh, new project, uh, important for you. So I'll come back to the important for you because today we'll be doing tutorial, but let me finish this. So click on open. Okay, then you get a canvas. So I'll open canvas. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Uh, as you know, in MEMS, the first thing that we have to define is the material. Remember the process when I was defining polymers? We said, okay, start with 110 SiO2. And then you're going to do a metal deposition, or aluminum deposition, all that kind of stuff. So the first thing that you have to do is you have to create uh, a material. But to do that, Okay, let's see, what, what is that guy? Uh, yeah, no, no, not been so to the left. Oh, that's weird. Uh, open, we already opened the project. Uh, okay, do a 3D, yeah, build a solid model. Okay, that's it, good guy. You, you build a 3D model. The idea is, remember, a MEMS device typically could take six to eight weeks, or even Longer than uh, that. So if you make a mistake, you lose that six weeks, you come back, you fix, a, you know, you fix it, and then you do the whole uh, mass thing uh, again. So the whole thing could extend up to four to five months. So typically, unlike any other discipline in engineering, what we do is we do a lot of simulation beforehand. When I say simulation, it's not only really finite elements. I, it's actually geometrical simulation. So you define your process, and once you define the process, you want to look at you know, what does a 3D look like? If I do a deposit here, uh, and then my mask looks like this, will it get washed away, or will it stay? So that, uh, that question will be answered by this model, okay? So at the end, the outcome is you define the mask, but you get also a 3D picture. Uh, in fact, they gave me a version which is incredible. Uh, it, very looks, uh, it looks very realistic. So, uh, but not this one, it's another one. That most of you interested to talk to me about that. But anyway, Let's give a name to a model, biochip1, ME585, <laughs> underscore ME, yeah. Uh, one of the things, uh, headache with this program, it doesn't take space, so it's an old uh, Unix spaghetti code, I mean, they put two things together, so you have a problem with that. Okay, now, the first thing I want to define is the material, okay? This is what I like it, so you drop down the menu, okay, so uh, open it. Uh, so here is the drop down menu, uh, yeah, uh, just open, because there's already, okay. Polysilicon, for example, do you guys remember the Young's modulus for polysilicon? So why don't we search for polysilicon, uh, the drop down menu, yes, search for poly C, uh, alpha vanilla, yeah, so polysilicon, so math, uh, yeah, under 30 to under 90, depending, yeah, well, under 60, I'm sorry. So the Young's modulus, if you go uh, elastic answer, right? So click on edit, right here, yes. Uh, so what is the Young's modulus? Uh, yeah, 1.6 times the R5 uh, kilopascal, which is 160, uh, well, megapascal, which is 160 gigapascal. Okay, they give you it in megapascal, so that, that's, that's what we want. Poison's ratio. That's one of the questions I would be asking you last year, I asked that, and then uh, we're weird. So what's the typical uh, poison ratio for that here? For the, uh, the unit would be? No unit, good. Uh, somebody put giga pascal and uh, that was bad. Uh, but anyway, uh, we have that. So if you are interested in the electric up down, well, thermal property, cancel this. Uh, let's look at the uh, thermal conductivity. Which is K. Uh, 
uh, 10 to the power minus 7, right? 3.2 times 10 to the power minus 7. Anyway, the material property is defined for you. You want to modify it, you could modify it right here. Okay? Uh, let's quickly look at aluminum. By the way, Dan, if you want to sit down and. Uh, yeah. So feel free to ask questions. Uh, aluminum, for example, what's the Young's modulus for aluminum? By the way, I'm going to ask that in a bit term. Because why would the lab put this, right? Anybody? Uh, 70. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it should be about 70 gigapascal. Click, yeah, 77. So it's 7.7 .7 times 10 to the power 4 megapascal, which is 7, uh, 77 gigapascal. Okay? Uh, so these are well known. Uh, what else? How about gold? If you have to guess. Huh? No? I don't know, so uh, now, there are two types of uh, aluminum that are two, well, whenever you have a metal, you have two types of metals. One is what we call a bulk metal. So for example, if you build a rod out of aluminum, the, the Young's modulus is different than what we call a thin film. The ones you deposit, actually, the Young's modulus is different. So uh, typically, when I talk about Young's modulus, it's for the thin film. Okay, so gold thin film, uh, let's see, uh, AU, yeah, I, I think I saw gold, yeah. I'll bet you it's going to be a little bit higher than aluminum, but uh, let's find out. Yeah, click on gold, please. And then, yeah, you know what to do. And it turns out it's a little bit less, right? 5.7, it's 57. How bad are we that? But anyway, the material property is defined in this. If you want to import some you have weird materials, so you could have your own uh, material tape. Okay, let's cancel and get out of this. Uh, all right, so after that, the first thing is we define material, so let, let me write it down. By the way, some of this would be in the midterm, uh, because what I'm doing right, while I'm explaining this, I mean, some of the stuff that's in my head, I'm going to download it to a, a midterm question. Uh, so define material, uh, I expect you to know aluminum, gold, uh, and particularly poly C. Uh, and the second one is, after that, we define process. So there's one process where we took a whole lecture, right? Omar remembers it as, what, what is that process that we spent the whole day? I mean, a whole class. Poly mops. Yeah. So, it turns out uh, there are industry standard processes. You know, like I said, poly mops because it's a shared one. Uh, Sandia Lab in New Mexico has its own. Uh, so, uh, there are templates. So, uh, let, let's see what kind of uh, process they have. So, if you do the drop down, Daniel, so it says create. Yeah, let's create a new process. So when you do, uh, yeah, click on the drop down menu, so I'm going to create a new one, a new dollar by short. This is what I have about this program. Okay, somebody remind me about body mops. How many steps did we have? 20 something, right? And what these guys have done is, uh, Daniel, if you could expand this, please. And move that guy to the left, very good. Thank you. So all the processes that you could use are already defined there for you. So for example, if it's a custom process, metal deposition followed by this, followed by that, you could build it right here. Or if you want to use the industry standard, which I want you to use for your final design project, by the way, uh, we go to, uh, where are they? Uh, uh, not user ones. Uh, foundry processes. So foundry, by the way, means uh, the place we actually fabricate the screen. Including facilities for the foundry. Uh, Intel, if you're interviewing with Intel, uh, if it's a foundry job, it doesn't mean it's the old metal casting kind of job. It's a premium job. Okay? Uh, so now, like I said, uh, there are well-known ones. In fact, remember I mentioned SOI uh, mumps? What is it? Polymumps, I don't know. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. So, body box is highlighted. Uh, the first one is IME, right? So that is a university in Belgium, actually. Uh, for some reason, I'm just, with very amazing uh, electronics people from Belgium, and then they build this institution. It's really interesting. Now it's a brand. So there's a process, so some of the, uh, so right now you have two choices. Especially if you're doing semiconductor IC chips. Either you send it to Taiwan, okay, uh, because that's what Qualcomm does. Every chip that Qualcomm does is made in uh, uh, Taiwan. The other one is for academic, uh, we send it to Belgium. It's cheaper, because there's already an organization built there, it's a huge structure, they already know all the uh, trademarks, the tricks and all that. You know, why uh, waste your time? So that's, so that's why it's right there. Now, let's click on Polymaps, and then I'll guarantee you, all the 20 steps, if you, there you go. All the 20 something steps are there for you. Okay, the first step. Uh, if you do control class, can we see these? I don't know more than you guys, but I would imagine you could be sitting over there. So if you do control class, can we increase the font? Uh, okay, let's, let's not worry about it. Uh, okay, so the first one is... Uh, can we do that in about 10 seconds? <laughs> yeah, there you go. So let's make it a high density or... I think the smaller one is the The smaller one is the big one? Okay. Oh, there you go. Now we don't see the ears. Okay, there you go. Yeah, this is nice. Okay, yeah, yeah, now I, feel, now I can teach. <laughs> so uh, the first one is you start with N5, if you remember, lecture three, lecture four, uh, silicon, uh, and remember, even in my lecture PowerPoint, I had mentioned 1.2 uh, ohm centimeter kind of resistivity. Uh, then the thickness, uh, this one is uh, not right, I mean, because of visualization, because the actual thickness of a wafer, if you guys remember, is 500 micron. Now the problem is, eventually we're going to visualize our uh, devices. 500 microns is huge. Your devices are about 4 or 5 microns. So if you want to do uh, uh, imaging, you can't see them. So what, typically what we do is we just cut it down to 20. Again, this is just for visualization, okay? Uh, we can even cut it to 10. So the next, the first layer is nitride layer, if you guys remember, insulation layer. So uh, what kind of process do I use for nitride, anybody? This is a warm up for your midterm. LPCVD, yeah, we find the process right here. Uh, so LPCVD deposition of uh, uh, nitride, and the thickness is 0.6. This is consistent with what you have in the PowerPoint. 0.6 micron, which is 600 nanometers. Uh, and then after that, poly zero, the first layer, okay? After the first layer, then we have to do, because remember, the first layer is usually for the uh, metal traces, the wires. Remember the example uh, uh, I gave you for the midterm, where I'm going to have a, a, a poly zero for the wires and so on. So for that, once you deposit 0.5 micron thick poly layer, then you have to etch it. And that's how you're going to etch a 500 nanometer, which is the same as 0.5, so you pattern it. And for patterning that, uh, there, is, there are two masks called poly zero and hole zero. Don't worry about the hole because, but poly zero uh, is good enough. Then the next one is after you've done the patterning of poly zero, if you remember, we do poly, no, uh, oxide. The first sacrificial layer. Again, LVCVD, no pressure, can become vapor deposition, okay? Uh, and uh, the uh, sacrificial material is called PSG, and you need to know what it is, phosphosilicate glass, uh, two micron. If you remember that lecture, why am I doing two micron? Which means I need a spacing between this, the moving part and the bottom, at least two micron thick. So that's why I have this glass, Extending for two microns. So once I have that, then I also uh, pattern. 
right? Because that's going to give me access into, uh, in terms of etching uh, Ali one. So you do your uh, etching using the Dempo. So Dempo is coming back again here. Remember what was the thickness of the uh, Dempo layer? You don't want to go through all the way. 0.75, and it, it's right there. If you guys remember, you, you'll see it in the uh, lecture material. So, you have a sacrificial layer of two micron, but for dimple, which is going to come to uh, poly two, I need only 0.75 micron. So I'm going to etch only 0.75 micron, and that's going to be achieved by that process. Okay. And if you want to put anchor, so this is my recommendation. If you want to follow that lecture and you want to match it with this, I encourage you. I mean, if you want to go above and beyond the minimum that I expect. It will really make it clear, the PowerPoint together with this guy. Okay, and then uh, you could do uh, your PSG and all that, and uh, after that, party one. Two micron again, because your structural material uh, is going to have a thickness of two micron, uh, two micron. So two micron thick, and then a two micron gap. Okay, then once you deposit, always you have to follow the pattern. And patterning is done by dry RIE. And RIE stands for reactive ion etching. Okay, uh, so we do a, a reactive ion etching. And what's the material that I use for uh, reactive ion etching? I think I mentioned that in the class. Come on, guys, it's a practice. Anybody? That's a scary. Is this the HF? Oh. HF. So typically we use HF. Uh, so that's why we're sending it to some other place. I mean, you know, why do you want to worry about this kind of thing? But anyway, uh, so there is additional data. I mean, uh, details over there. But uh, you're going to etch it using three masks. There is one for patterning poly one, but usually I'm not really interested in that. I want to put uh, holes. Okay. Uh, and I want you to listen to me carefully uh, uh, about this concept about holes. I was supposed to mention this in some of the other lectures, but I did not, so let me do it now. So this is your proof mask with Crab Lake kind of design as the uh, beams. Then what's going to happen is, remember, you have two micron thick. This guy is, if you look at 3D, it's about two micron. Then it's lying uh, on top of a two micron uh, sacrificial layer, right? Now what happens is, if I want to send my, so the etching for this, it's DRIA will etch it this way, but we also use chemical etching, wet etching. For when etching for the material to approach the sacrificial, uh, sacrificial material below it, it's very difficult. So typically what we do is we put what we call etching holes. Several of these. So typical diameter is pay attention to 20 to 40 micron diameter. Okay? So, the purpose of these etching holes, number one, to give the wet etchant access to the sacrificial material. Because you just can't go this way, otherwise it will take forever, and it starts etching something that you don't want. So what you do is you stop for it, then it goes in and it packs it. Okay, uh, that's number one. Number two, when you're done with this, and you're using your accelerometer, one of your most difficult aspects is what we call damping. Even a small amount of air for a two micron, it's very difficult to push things, you know, you know move things within a two micron distance. Air will offer you a huge amount of damping. Okay? So what we do is, and you see these construction uh, sites, uh, usually they put this plastic as a fence. Why do you think they put those holes? I mean, wind is always blowing this. Why do you want to block the wind? Let the wind go. So essentially what you do is you put the holes, right? So they, they stay. So the same thing here. So you put these edge holes, every time this is moving up and down or whatever, air will squeeze through that so you don't have squeeze film damping. 
and you don't have just damping at all. Okay, so two use. Number three. So edge holes, uh, one is axis, the other one is squeeze, squeeze film damping. And the third one is reduce weight. So when we design the uh, for a fundamental frequency, so if it's 50 hertz, then you uh, do the first analysis, it gives you 60 hertz. So what you want to do, you want to reduce, so you take some material away. I know actually that increases your frequency, but uh, you get the idea. So it gives you an ability to uh, reduce the weight of this. So three particular uses. Yes. Squeeze, uh, squeeze. Let, let me spread it out. S-Q-U-E-E-Z-E, -E -E. film, damping. In the, Just say damping. The first one was so that you can get down underneath it a lot more quickly. Yeah, yeah. for the liquid to go and etch it that way. Makes sense. Okay. And the second one is it, give, uh, it reduces the, the, the uh, damping. Uh, so the first one is for the engine to get access to the bottom. Because remember, these guys are very heavy and flat plates. So if I'm doing a dry etching, I'm going to etch only the uh, edges. So I have to do wet etching. So I'm going to do the wet etching. Now the wet etching, then the only access it has is from the sides. So it will take forever to etch it out. And then in fact, it's going to etch some other thing. So what you do is you provide etching access. So as soon as you put it in a, a, a chemical bath, then the chemicals will go through that and then attack. And the difference is huge. Okay, Danny. Uh, how about the spacing of the holes? Uh, spacing of the holes. So this is where engineering comes in. And some of you would be doing this when you're, you're uh, designed. So you don't want them to be spaced too close, uh, well, too far. So typically is, so the diameter is 40, so center to center, 250 to 300 micron spacing. Okay? So you don't want like a millimeter spacing. I mean, anyways, you don't have that kind of space. I mean, uh, the whole proof mass is going to be less. So, that 21, then you can do uh, oxide layer. Step number three, hard mask. Remember that question about a mask? Mask is sometimes just the uh, features on a transparency, or you could do a PSG mask because you don't want the material to be etched away, okay? So, uh, I encourage you to go through this, but uh, what I would like to do is in the next at least 15 minutes and then we split. Uh, let me pull out one of the tutorial examples and show you. Okay, uh, yeah, I, I'll show you. But before that, okay, kill this. So, let's assume that we defined our process here. Your process is defined, maybe you're gonna run the whole polymumps, or maybe you don't want to run the whole polymumps. Uh, anyway, it's templatable, uh, modifiable, whatever, okay? So you have the process defined. The next thing is you have to define the layout. And this is what I would like to spend uh, my time. So what I would like to do is, instead of working on a newer file, let's go back and import a tutorial. Uh, okay, go to open project. Yeah, import tutorial. Now, the person who's going to be assigned in any given team uh, to be the uh, coventer web person, I really encourage you to go through the tutorial, one of them. Uh, my favorite is the uh, micro mirror, uh, the mirror array, yeah, the array, yeah, yeah. Uh, double, yeah, click on that, click on OK, so it's going to import it, then you could open this guy, uh, oh, do you have to import it as you create the object? Uh, yes, as you create the but, but this is just a tutorial, right? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, we already opened the project. No, it's already open, so we go to the 3D. They change the architecture a little bit. Yeah, builds a solid model. Okay. Now, they already have a material property file called MPD1. Uh, process, if you do a drop down, they already have a process defined. Uh, no, no, not anyone, over here. Uh, mirror array proc. So the process file is abbreviated as a proc file, P-R-O-C, okay? Uh, 
Yeah, so you have the process file. Now what I would like to do is, I would like, to, so it's a mirror. And you haven't seen what it looks like, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you what the masks look like, okay? And then eventually we're gonna build the 3D model, and then we go home. Uh, instead of create a new layout, if you do a drop down, there is already a pre-built, so let's pull out that guy. Okay, now, once you have that, then what you do is let's open it. Uh, so, yeah, open space. Okay. All right, this is what I want you to pay attention. This is where it becomes very, very different from SolidWorks. So, as you know, MEMS is a 2D kind of process, right? And then you have all these kind of geometries repeating. You know, look at this guy. The uh, crab leg, what looks like more of a frog leg here, but uh, the crab leg uh, beam. It's actually repeated four times. And in a single wafer, I'm gonna have about 400 of these guys. I don't wanna repeat this 400 times. And cut and paste is not that helpful because what's gonna happen is maybe assume you have this repeated 400 times, right? So you have a wafer and uh, typical size, as you guys remember, four inch, uh, which is 10 centimeters, right? Uh, so what's going to happen is you're going to have hundreds of these smaller devices. So that, this guy that I show you, at the end when you put in a wafer, it's going to look like this. Imagine I pop in the whole wafer, 400 of these. And then I learned that, oh man, I made a mistake. So the dimension itself, uh, this guy being 25 micron, it should be 40 micron. Then I'm not going to do uh, you know one by one or redo the whole thing. So there is this concept. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys have the C plus plus coding. Of course, my laptop came and then uh, removed the need for let me C plus uh, plus. But if you do C plus plus coding, there is this concept called object oriented programming. Oh, ping, so you guys know that. That lab still has it. Yeah, but they hide it so much that the average user doesn't even care, right? Yeah, it actually, I, I built an object in the MATLAB before. It was, it, it was okay, don't get me wrong, man. It's right. Right. Less C++, but it worked all right. Right, right, right. So, but the constant, you know, uh, you know, a novice user doesn't need to worry about it. But anyway, I'm glad some people would uh, worry about this. Now, what this is, you build a class, you build an object, you can use it again and again and again. If you want to modify it, it's, it's a whole code. Maybe you've copied it in about a thousand places. So all you have to do is go to the class and then just make the modification. The whole thing cascades through. It, uh, so my first training was a very old language, so I'm not going to mention it, so just close your ears so I have to say it. Uh, Fortran. Have you guys heard of that? Well, I, I, I told you people are still using uh, Fortran. But anyway, from Fortran came C. Uh, the C, the guy who did the C is through uh, this Danish guy or uh, Finnish guy, considered like a god. But now we look back at C and then everybody says C really sucks because it was sequential. So it was not object oriented. Then the C++ uh, thing came. Now, bottom line, what it means is each image that I create, I'm going to call it a set. And if you go there, uh, go to uh, cell, open, then uh, let's take uh, mirror. There you go. So remember the edge holes? So this is one mirror, one of the uh, circular mirrors. Actually, this is a good question for the picture. I'll just give you this and say uh, cross section. But so pay attention to this. So what you have is an anchor, two anchors like this, and in the middle you have this circular mirror. So it's a torsion beam. So remember, I'm looking from the top. So at the bottom, I'm going to have an electrode. If I pull it, then the mirror is going to turn this way. Then I remove the uh, actuation, then it goes back flat. So this is my mirror surface, and these squares that you see are etching holes. Because remember, the mirror is going to be suspended. I, I'm going to have a sacrificial layer of PSG. And the only way I could get rid of it is by this, number one. Number two, I want the mirror to be able to move without damping. So that, that helps me. Now, so you look at this, you design your mirror. 
Now, this is one unit. But the mirror is made up of additional cells. It's already a cell, but it's also made of additional cells. Now, this edge hole, uh, let's, uh, it's, a, it's a cell by itself. What I mean by that is if you go back, go to cell, open, uh, hole, 3 micron by 3 micron. Okay. Now it turns out I don't like 3 micron by 3 micron, which modifies whatever I was saying before. 30 micron, right? Uh, so you need a higher resolution. Anyway, so I don't want 3 by 3 micron. I want to modify it to 6 by 6 micron. Or uh, 5 by 5. Okay, now double click on this, please. Let's modify it. Uh, yes, so the way... <laughs> This is going to frustrate you, okay? I'm going to admit. Uh, SolidWorks is amazing in terms of modeling and all that. Uh, look, these guys are nerds. They don't have time. They just want to do the next spot. Uh, so essentially what they define is minus 1.5 here, plus 1.5 over there. Yeah, by default, you know, that's 3, right? So, no, no, that's going to make it 6. Daniel. You want to make it 6, Daniel? Oh, okay, okay, good, good. <laughs> Okay, click on apply. I think that you're missing. Close. Um, now go to file uh, cell. Of course, save it. No cells. You're saving the cell. No, here. Yeah, uh, save. Now this is what I'm, what's going to happen. If I go to the mirror object, then this change should be reflected. So go back to the mirror. You see, bigger ones. Now let me show you even more. Go to cell, open. Now, cells are not created equal, unfortunately. So one of them is called a top cell. So let's open the top cell. So all these guys are in the same hierarchy. OK, now, so what happened was, I, actually, I haven't even populated the whole thing. So this is a design where I have three mirrors. So what I'm doing is, in fact, you can see that these guys have changed. So all I have to do was go to that object. So that's the beautiful, part, uh, beautiful part of this. Now, it turns out AutoCAD has introduced. Of course, you are ME guys. You don't want to talk about AutoCAD. Uh, uh, so, uh, but anyway, they have uh, a very similar concept now. So they deal with objects because essentially what's happening is you know, look, you may be doing 10, 15 projects. Why do the same thing again and again? I mean, uh, uh, for example, a screw design or a bolt design or a plate design. So you want to recycle things. SolidWorks is also introducing that as uh, what assembly plus, but not exactly the same concept. Okay. Uh, what else do we need to know here? So that's your uh, cell concept. Now, in terms of, uh, so let's go back to one simple. Uh, yeah, open. Uh, let's go to just the mirror. Okay, what else do I want to change? I want to change the angle. Okay, it's too small. So what you do is, it's already created for you, or you have to create it. So when you do your final design project, this is the kind of stuff that you have to think. Okay, well, if your job is to do a microfluidic channel, maybe you want to change it. So if you have five sizes, then you could have channel one plus one cell, channel plus cell two, and so on. Now, uh, go to cell, open. Uh, so I have a dummy beam, I have a beam anchor ground. Okay, that may be it. Yeah, that's the one. This is the right side. It's the right side? Okay, let's see, we're going to find out. So why don't we do this? Click on, uh, okay, click on that guy. Now that, that's the anchor. Uh, this one dimension. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, radius is two. Why don't you make it five? Click on apply. Okay, that's good. Because like, we just want to demonstrate weird stuff, right? Okay, now hold that. So this is the last point I'm going to introduce. I know spring break is waiting for you. I don't want to confuse you. <laughs> so we have the cell concept. But it turns out each cell further has layers. Pi zero, pi one, pi two. So all these colors that you see are different layers. OK, what do I mean by that? So there is this thing called Layer Browser. And if you could expand it. 
Okay, so you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And there's a reason why you have nine. How many masks do we have in poly mumps? Nine. And it's right there. So each of the layer is one mask. Okay? So uh, remember these names? Bumps, hole, mirror, ground, metal, anchor. So all the so the program when, when you picked poly mumps, it already created these things for you. Okay? So don't change the names, let it create whatever, take that one as it is. Otherwise you're gonna hate uh, this program because it's gonna mess up a lot of things. Okay, uh, let's close this guy. And we may have another session on this, but let's see how it goes. Uh, but for today I think we're, we're coming to the end, so I have to show you. Okay, now let's get out. Uh, oh yeah, we wanna show it uh, how it's gonna look like in the mirror. Oh, it didn't change? Oh, the right one, yeah, you're right. Look at that, I want changed. Uh, you could do the same thing with the other guys, okay? Now what I would like to do is I want to build a 3D model of this guy. So what could happen is either Daniel's uh, laptop is gonna crash or we're gonna get to see something. So uh, let's get out of here. Okay, now I want to build a new layout. So the top uh, cell is not a beam anchor, no, no, here. Uh, the drop down menu, why don't we pick the mirror? Just what we're, we're gonna see if we can build a whole mirror. Okay, no. Like I said, either it crashes or we go home. Okay, something is coming up. Oh, there you go. We got your mirror, so you can zoom in. Uh, now, if you had made a mistake, trust me, this is where you find out. Maybe the bottom layer is, uh, okay, let's, let's zoom in because I'm going to ask this in the uh, midterm uh, in terms of cross-section and all that. So, uh, can you uh, rotate it? I think that's an option. Okay, now one of the things that you could do is you could take this layer and uh, not show it. So, that's layer zero, right? Click on layer zero, right mouse. Uh, you could hide that. Uh, you could hide also layer, uh, layer one, which is a ground, I guess, yeah. Hide. Nothing is hiding. Okay, the next one. <coughs> okay, that's the ground. Hide selection. Yeah, okay. Uh, all right, now you can zoom in, turn this around. Now, what I would like to do is actually, yeah, yeah. so the, you see the edge holes, they give you access to the bottom one. Uh, and then let's look at the anchors. How do the anchors look like? So, by the way, it also has an option where it could give you a cross section. What I'm giving you as homework and stuff. Yeah, it's already available. Okay, so, yeah, yeah that's the way, uh, the weird anchor that we did uh, looks like. So you have the first poly zero layer, or the insulation layer, and then uh, poly zero or poly one in the metal layer, okay? I know it's a very short introduction to the program, but it gives you an idea, and hopefully we'll have one more session, I don't know. Uh, but the person who's not going to do this, uh, you're going to have support from my PA in terms of helping you. So, what's up?